start with a short prayer this morning. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we ask you this morning for humility, for the grace to be able to approach you open-hearted and plead for mercy. Please grant us your mercy and the courage to stand by you. And this we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, Today we're going to talk about um, a very tough subject. Um, Tough for me. uh, And uh, I I, I dare to say it's going to be tough for all of you. Um, And something that we have to deal with because um, culture of today is certainly not appreciative of humility. Um, So let's go over. The question really is, is it hard to be humble? St. Francis of Sales tells us that humility is a must before God. And it's not bad to be meek before men. Today, strong-willed men are labeled as arrogant. And invertebrate men are labeled as humble. And that is totally the wrong way to look at it. Weak men may be called meek, but they don't necessarily are humble before God because humility does not take away standing up for God. A definition of humility is the state when I realize I am a mere creature before God. So that's the first thing. Okay, to recognize you're not that big a deal. I am not that big a deal. St. Peter and St. Paul would not qualify as meek men. But if you saw Peter or Paul die the way they died, you would know they were humble. Now, it's good to be both meek and humble. And in the end, St. Peter and St. Paul were meek and humble. But to be clear, the primary virtue is humility. Because we are called to please God first. Now, St. Padre Pio, um, who uh, we're going to talk about next week, uh, Deacon Tom Cloutier uh, is going to tell us about uh, Padre Pio. Um, He was not meek in the confessional. People came to him without firm resolution of amendment, and he didn't give them absolution. And those people left crying. But 95% of them came back weeping with repentance and thanksgiving. 
He was tough on them. He was a very humble man. But he was a very tough Christian. We need humility to get into heaven, not happiness. There are many examples of Christians today that have been tortured and killed by ISIS. Many stories, stories of parents seeing their four- and five-year-olds crucified in front of them. Can you imagine the pain? And yet, they never ceased proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord. A humble man is someone who realizes that by dying to the body, we can achieve everlasting life. And I'll tell you in a little bit the story of St. Maximilian Kolbe. Many American Catholics today are called bigots, They're called arrogant, they're called unmerciful for proclaiming the beliefs of the Catholic Church. And probably the top one of that is being pro-life. And look at all the names we get called for being pro-life and against abortion. The lives of the saints tell us that humility is key for holiness. The kind of humility that bows before Jesus Christ and his one church. And you know that God the Father embraces the prodigal son in the Bible with all the issues that that prodigal son had. God the Father shows reckless love in the presence of humility. So, can we aspire for greatness? Can we pray for humility? St. Thomas Aquinas tells us that the task of humility is to temper and restrain the mind lest it tends to high things immoderately. All sin is pride against God and denial of humility. Our obedience to God must be humble, loving submission to him, and to following his will. But the other side says, okay, that means you have to be a wimp. No. A Christian man must set sights on great things, but must recognize that true greatness comes from God and not from one's own self. And that's the key, is to recognize where it comes from. St. Thomas Aquinas again says, there is in man something great, which he possesses, and here's the key, through the gift of God. Humility demands you recognize your gifts and that they are the gifts of God to you. Humility makes man think little of himself in consideration of his own deficiency. Praying for humility requires that we admit our own dependence on God. Father Mo got me probably two years ago. Uh, He's my spiritual director, and um, uh, when I came with an issue to him, he says, uh, you know, Hugo, 
you probably ought to try the litany of humility and pray it, you know, every day or every couple of days. It, uh, it, it will, you know, set you up and, 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 and have something to measure against. There is no tougher prayer than this prayer that you have in front of you, okay? Uh, and if you don't have a copy of the Litany of Humility in front of you, because we're going to pray it, um, uh, get it from Mike. He's got uh, um, some copies there. Um, trust me, that prayer is bound to make you more and more humble every day. Uh, when I looked at it the first time, I thought, this is impossible. Okay? And in all one big step, yes, it is impossible. Okay? But little by little, it sticks to you. So, since I haven't prayed it today, um, I'd love for you guys to pray it with me. And then use it often, okay? Pray it daily, pray it every couple of days. It's a very tough prayer. I'm going to read the sentences and you answer in the bold letters. So, O oh Jesus, meek and humble of heart, from the desire of being esteemed, from the desire of being loved, from the desire of being extolled, from the desire of being praised, from the desire of being preferred to others, from the desire of being consulted, from the desire of being approved, from the fear of being humiliated, from the fear of being despised, from the fear of suffering rebukes, from the fear of being calumniated, from the fear of being forgotten, from the fear of being ridiculed, from the fear of being wronged, from the fear of being suspected, that others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, that others may be preferred to me in everything. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Amen. And if you really had the chance to think of it, every one of those statements you got to agree with me. That's tough. Okay? You can't get from here to there in one big jump. But the idea is, is that when you're finished with this prayer, it sort of moves the bar. Okay? The idea is to put you to think about the each and every situation that you have on a daily basis and just think differently about yourself. Satan was full of pride and he rebelled against God, causing God to cast Satan and his angels out of heaven and into hell. He then seduced Eve and Adam 
uh, to join his rebellion. And because of that, Adam and Eve were to live with pain, toil, and death just because they rejected humility. Man was to return to dust, says Genesis. And if you think about it, turning to dust is the ultimate lesson in humility. Pride, a capital sin, leads man to envy and to resent God. Modern culture is infected with prideful rejection of God and embraces individualism and selfishness. We try to find happiness by way of money and power. We rely on technology and science to tell all the ills of society. We reject sexual morality. And we use the government to enforce relativism. All true today. Like gorillas in the wild, we, modern man, thumps on his empty chest in prideful display and cries out, you know, like Tarzan, ah, look at me. In modern mind, humility is not a virtue. I spent a lot of time in my young years, 30 and below, thumping my chest. Being so proud of what I had accomplished. And many of you know the story, and I'm not going to repeat it, but the Lord thumped me, and he thumped me good. And at that time, I prayed and I thought a lot about the virtue of humility. Now let's talk about the humility of Jesus Christ, the real example of humility. Jesus Christ demonstrated the perfection and power of humility in the incarnation. He descended to earth to become the son of man. He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, and accepted willingly the constraints of human learning. He chose humble parents. Mary becomes a new Eve in the humility of the handmaiden of the Lord. And Joseph, a carpenter, humbly accepts and defends Mary, accepts celibacy in marriage, and raises Jesus as his own son. Jesus embraces humble circumstances. He was born in a humble manger, no earthly pedigree, lives in poverty, and associates with sinners. He submits to baptism. He had no sin, but he humbly accepts baptism as part of of solidarity with man. He allows Satan to tempt him. The humility of perfect love that he has allows the temptation to happen without him destroying Satan. He rejects earthly accolades. The Jews wanted him to be a king. To reign over the Romans and the Jews. To stem the oppression. Instead, 
Jesus rejects all of that. And ends up in the cross. And he embraces the humility of the passion. He enters Jerusalem on a donkey. He washes his disciples' feet. And he willingly allows the Jews and the Romans to insult him, to torture him, and finally to kill him. Jesus explicitly directs man to embrace humility and reject pride. He condemns the sin of pride. He opposes the proud Pharisees and rebukes his apostles when they try and find who is the best, the highest, that will sit next to him in his kingdom. He directs man to be humble. Humility is the real core of the Beatitudes. And he instructs church leaders and Christians to be humble and pick up their cross. And I'll tell you a short story um, of another episode that taught me a lot about humility. And the Lord has funny ways of showing you if you pay attention. Um, Many, if not all of you, know that uh, back in 2010, um, I had a severe issue uh, with my right leg. Um, It was swollen from uh, the below the knee all the way to the foot and the toes uh, and severe pain uh, specifically at night so it wouldn't allow me to sleep. Um, And this went on for three years. Um, And so uh, I I was treated by all sorts of different people Uh, here at CMC, and vascular surgeons, and so on and so forth. Bypasses, uh, nothing worked. And so I was um, pretty much told, uh, Hugo, um, you've got two choices. There's this one experimental treatment at Dartmouth Hitchcock in Lebanon that deals with Uh, stem cells injections, your own stem cells injections into your leg, uh, which is, it's an experimental thing. I mean, it hasn't, there there are no real results accumulated other than it's safe. But will it work? Maybe, maybe not. And so the doctor was explaining this to me, and I said, what is the other choice? I said, "Well, well, Cut your leg off. Well, that was, you know, I guess it was an easy decision to make since, you know, uh, it, it was better to try a new thing than to get the leg cut off. But throughout all this time, I had been praying and praying to save my leg. Okay? Save my leg, please, Lord. And one night, I was in horrendous pain, and I got up because I, I, I couldn't stand anymore, and I wanted to at least walk around. And, so, and I ended up at my desk in my office at home, and I put my head down. And I said, Lord, look, it's your leg. You gave me this leg. If you want it back, it's yours. Within one week, I started the stem cells injections. 
And thanks be to God. My leg was back and cured. And in fact, a week ago, I went back to my yearly um, checks. And the doctor said, Hugo, as stable as ever. Thanks be to God. It wasn't my leg that he wanted. It was my humility. He wanted me to recognize that he gave me that leg. And it was his to save. The Lord also demonstrated that humble dependence on God can defeat temptation. Jesus rejected Satan for 40 days. And again, in Gethsemane. He established humility as mandatory for salvation. He said, the humility of a child, what was needed to get to heaven. He promised the fruits of humility. He said, the humble will inherit the earth. He taught man to pray for humility. He said to pray a humble, our Father, where we submit to the Father, accepting God's will, begging for daily bread and forgiveness. And he endowed the church with humility. Throughout the years, apostles, martyrs, and saints have embraced a humble spirit. Now, St. Augustine says that humility is the foundation of all other virtues and the key to all spiritual growth. If we are not humble, we cannot be holy. There are six ways to cultivate humility. One of them, of course, is pray for it. St. John Vianney said, we should daily ask God for humility. That's the use of the litany of humility. We should accept humiliations. It's the most effective way to learn humility when you accept embarrassing circumstances. Two weeks ago, I was coming back from San Antonio, um, and I was taking a flight from San Antonio to Chicago and then continuing on to Manchester with Karen, my wife. And as we were taken off from San Antonio, I went into diabetic shock, meaning my sugar level went too low. And this was happening as we were taken off. So Karen runs back to the flight attendants, which are telling him, ma'am, ma'am, you have to sit down, sit down. Yeah. She said, no. My husband is in shock, and you have the tools for that in your medical kit. So finally, they paid attention to her. And they made a, a call on the, on the uh, PA system uh, if there was any um, medical doctors or uh, nurses on the flight. And a medical doctor from um, um, University of Texas, San Antonio, came up and a professor nurse also from the University of Texas, San Antonio. And they took care of me. Now, the first thing as I'm coming back, I wasn't gone very long, thank God. And so I, you know, as I'm coming back, I'm feeling very embarrassed and humiliated. They even considered taking the plane back. Made sense, they'd just taken off. But 
the doctor and the nurse decided to, you know, just take care of me, and 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 uh, so they they did all they needed to do, and and put glucose into my system intravenously, and et cetera, et cetera. But I decided, you know, instead of feeling embarrassed and humiliated, just step back and allow the humiliation. And you know, the one thing that came to mind was I was able to enjoy something that I put aside or forgotten for the past four, five, six months, perhaps even longer. And that was the kindness of people. That doctor, that nurse, the passenger behind me was worried that we're putting some ice on the back of my neck to make me feel better. And, uh, and so he took his tie off so that I could tie the ice and wouldn't fall back. He took his tie off and put that back. Okay? They were all around asking how they could help. And in fact, one of the passengers that continued on to Manchester, when we got to Manchester, she said to me, I'm glad you're feeling better. Would you like me to take your bags off of the belt for you? You don't, you don't see that kind of kindness so readily these days. And yet, by accepting the humiliation, I was able to actually see the goodness that was there in all those other people. So accept humiliation. Obey legitimate superiors. St. Benedict says the first degree of humility is prompt obedience. Distrust yourself. We put so much trust in ourselves that we forget God. Acknowledge your nothingness. Meditate on the greatness of God and what he has done all around you. Think better of others than yourself. The imitation of Christ tells us, if there is good in you, see more good in others so that you may remain humble. Humility is the foundation of our entire spiritual life. We must imitate Christ who emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and being born in the likeness of men. I'm having troubles, Mark. (laughs) There you go. Got it. Thank you. (laughs) So, how can each of us be humble hero in 2018? And by the way, those are not two words that are... um, um, that one preempts the other. They are humble heroes that exist. Wilberforce tells us that the road of heroic virtue is marked with great suffering. Many Christians today, many Christian men today, believe humility and heroism are mutually exclusive. We, all of us, have to build a culture of humble heroes. Men of human strength and greatness, while acknowledging that that strength can only be obtained by the grace of God. 
St. Thomas Aquinas again tells us, humility is truth. A man who is not humble cannot be a hero. Now, I personally have a lot of trouble being courageous and standing up with my words in a public setting, standing up for my beliefs. I mean, standing up and stating, I am a Catholic Christian and this is what I believe in. I sort of, you know, go back and I, I like to shut up. And I have the example of the absolute difference when I get home. Because Karen, uh, th- there's no doubt she's going to stand up. Okay, no doubt. She has no trouble with that. And so about, uh, I don't know if it was two months ago or three months ago, at the 8 o'clock mass, and some of you that were there will remember, it was the feast of St. Maximilian Colby. And Father Moe said something that really made an impression on me. And that was, he said, we all know the courage of Maximilian Kolbe. We do. He said, but what set that up was Maximilian Kolbe's humility. Think about that. He was able to put aside his ego And let that grace of courage from God come to his heart. And I thought, wait a minute, that 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 may not be a bad way for me to look at this. Be humble and open my heart to God's courage infused in me rather than thinking I have to somehow by myself muster up the courage. Made a great impression on me, and I'm working on it. It's, this is <laughs> work in progress. <laughs> but I'm working on it from that point of view. We must always recognize that God is the primary cause of all our great achievements. That's a must. Now, heroes are portrayed as warriors against the injustice and power of darkness. So a true hero is, by definition, a lover of Scripture. Remember that Christ used it at his protection against Satan in the desert. A hero is not the type to mince words, except as charity, not nicest, demands. He is unafraid to answer questions truthfully, even under hostility, and to speak out even when not asked to do, to do so if the situation demands it. And courage like this has, has to be developed. Some people use fasting as a method of acquiring that courage or helping acquire that courage. Love of one's enemies is essential in a hero's success in the battle against evil. I've been practicing something that seems to work for me. Consider it. Pray every day for one of your enemies or one of the people that you dislike vigorously. Pray 
one, not a group, for one of those enemies. Prayer is the lifeblood of a true hero. It keeps him from going, keeps him going when his strength fails and discouragement sets in. So, is it hard to be humble? Absolutely, you bet. But the Lord Jesus Christ demands it from us to achieve holiness and to receive his mercy. Think about that seriously. And finally, the questions to look at, and I've got, uh, for the group leaders, I've got the questions here, and I'll give it out um, as I finish. But the three questions, can you share a specific moment, really think about this, in your life when humility was a clear driving factor or a lesson learned? Why do you think humility is essential to become a hero? and to display courage. How can you be humble at work and still be successful? And like I said, next week, Deacon Tom Cluder will be talking to us about Padre Pio, pray, hope, and don't worry. Thank you very much, and God bless. Oh